this generation we are talking about is getting very individualistic, okay, not getting into interactions, doesn't want to interact with others. Are we going to let it go like that and encourage nomadism in the future and then leave it like that or force them to come to the office, avoid this nomadism? No, uh, who so, should, who uh, should I, intervene here? See, what should be the policy? I'll give you some context about my organization. Okay, I'm an entrepreneur. I um, run a BPO, I have an IT services, and I have a product startup. I have offices in Chennai, Coimbatore, and in a rural place near Trinilveli. So, uh, of course, COVID changed everything and uh, you know and everybody you know most of my managers and everybody they are all from the southern Tamil Nadu part and all that they all went back home and uh, things like that so and of course we cut down our office space in all the places by 50 percent and things like that you know profits increased etc uh, but we wanted to continue on that uh, so we tried different uh, experiments, I'll come to that later, but just from the within IT also, right? So I could see that my BPO teams, they are, you know, we are very comfortable, they are very comfortable, they are working from small town, you know, they are uh, saving a lot of money, lot of women employees, they want to take care of kids, they work after 10 p.m. and finish their daily quota and things like that, it's working per perfectly fine. IT services, it's working, but we are not able to see that, see, IT, lot of technology keeps changing, people have to learn from each other and all that, but they are acting like, okay, the task is given, I've done this, but the quality of task over time deteriorates, they are not improving and things like that, and we are also seeing probably some of them are working elsewhere also, we, we don't have proof, but we could see the you know, productivity is uh, impacting. Moonlighting. Yeah, moonlighting happens. Some, are some sunlighting also there. <laughs> <laughs> we are the moonlight. <laughs> so like the, the, the startup part of it yeah, is, it yeah, startup part of it, we have to, you know, we finding it uh, very difficult to actually move forward because without being there and trying to work together and solve all the problems, so that we are forcing them all to come, okay? But the problem of not wanting to come and letting go and all that, that's a big uh, challenge. We have to look at it. If you actually concept. step back a bit to figure out, to understand, if you actually stay, step back a bit to figure out why this corporate nomadism, and this is something that, that I've also been trying to figure out. Why is there, why are we even having this discussion? Why do people want to stay at home and work? I mean, what, what's what been the real driver, especially if, you, if you've interacted with teams and if you could share some insights behind what drives people to want or, or stay away from office and What's, what's driving that? Traffic, if you're in Bangalore, <laughs> obviously. No, no, even, even Chennai, like, uh, people, you know, stay in Ambatur and go to Omar and all that. Office, no, there's no water in the house now. That's, <laughs> a, that's the latest update. Shiv, Shiv, Kumar, but the this, you, you raised a very pertinent question, what we should do. I mean, I was thinking now, let's say, I say that time consumes everything. Seriously, that's a very powerful line. You can think of it. Today, let's say, after 20 years, we are going to have millennials like us. And then you have the Gen Z and Gen AI. I think this is only going to get worse. We may have to prepare. I don't yeah, think you yeah. can force. Uh, this is my view. I would flip that actually. That? That's, that's huh? We'll get better, right I would Why say. No, say I, I think post-COVID, I think they've got comfortable <laughs> sitting in my couch and, uh, you know, working. Uh, rather than getting out and traffic or whatever it may be. But I think I found my comfort in the last one and a half years in the COVID. So, and that... When flexibility is offered by many, what kind of flexibility? Are we talking about flexibility to wake up whenever we want? Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying, exactly. Because I can go to gym at any point of time, you know. I can go to gym at 12 noon. I can work at 10 o'clock night. So I think that has got into that comfort, actually. So why do I want to restrict in a very structured way of 9 to 6 kind of work when I can have the flexibility to do, you know. And I may be productive in the night. You know, there are still people say that I'm very productive in the night, uh, but I'm not productive in the time. So, many of them so, have just shifted their ch children's schools. Yeah, they are at a yeah, lesser many class. Of them after that, they have shifted. So uh, they if don't I'm not to... talking here, Charlingo, Simon Sinek says actually put your employees in comfort. They will bring customers. 
in certain businesses but certain non negotiables you have to just say absolutely homes they are building with work from uh, or space yeah. right <laughs> i think that's only going to increase yeah so, so the this commuting is contrary to what we've been experiencing sorry uh, the, the reason why i bring this up is prior to this i mean I, I i was a private equity investor in infrastructure so just when the covid was waning and we are talking about 2021 Uh, one of the first infra projects that we decided to invest in and i'm talking about 500 600 crores in a single project was an office space and that was backed by a lot of the primary surveys that we did a lot of research that we did from corporates and especially it it companies 21 22 where they when we were talking about work from home and office space is shrinking number one there was there was a lot of demand for office spaces that is corroborated over the last 2 years and i can definitely speak for uh, hyderabad bangalore and chennai where grade a office spaces has increased on an annual basis by at least 18 to 19% percent. and i mean these these are huge numbers and this in no way corroborates with the fact that co- this generation wants a work from home or a corporate nomadism is here to stay so i in my in my head i'm, I'm very conflicted you know how I, much of it is used fully No, no. We are talking about occupancies. Okay, all right. We are talking about occupancies. Not the seats. We are not talking about the supply side. Okay, perfect. I mean, it's it's not like the OMR supply side where <laughs> the supply outstrips the demand. But we are talking about occupancies. This will be relevant for the IT, ITS kind of jobs, no medicine. But it's not for all type of jobs. But no, no. What is mostly, I ITS, think you are talking about kind of IT, jobs. which yeah, is. Yeah, grade A spaces are IT, IT. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have something to add. This is from a uh, uh, IT. So I have two batchmates. one works in IT and that's the largest IT company in India they were the first one to announce we are doing away with office if you remember yeah. Yeah, yeah. TCS yeah. okay TCS. and they are the ones who are now announcing five days a week we ought to come to office <laughs> so we were just chatting in the group we have our own alumni group in which we keep chatting so we were just speaking fun of him he was part of the HR leadership team so what happened so very interestingly two things he said has happened one the trust level of the client is going down there is a dip in the trust level of the client more than us there is a client level dip and second which he said was the fact that uh these are these are young companies you know youngsters what we found that these people are actually nomadics they don't worry about we are all about i and this is impacting our team work so we have to get them together this is one the it company who said we'll go all org are the ones who are saying we're coming back Then there's another company which is the old brick and mortar FMCG company. They were the first ones to say we will want to come back fast, but they are ones who are saying we want to work from home. Yeah, they are saying the other way around. We are happy our guys are working from home. We don't have a problem. So very interestingly, one of the obviously the girls are smarter in our batch than us. Summarize in simple <laughs> that companies which are lifers, which have long time employees, there's a broad level of trust developed. they have a great connect with the company and the brand so we don't have to trust we we thought we the first one to come back because we can't work we are we don't have a problem for remote working and the company which announced that we are going remote is coming down because it's it's somewhere vacillating the nature of employees you have the lifers who work for longer time and freshers which constitute a large proportion okay. i think is is that could be a kind of thing which probably Again, there's no thesis around this, but I'm just saying from what we are seeing and what's. But the caveat is the WhatsApp University. <laughs> so <laughs> no, no, our yeah, B- my BPO experience yeah. is because of that. The lifers, many of them are ten years tenure and all that. We have absolutely no problem. Mm-hmm. And we wanted them to create small teams in their hometown and do that. That didn't work out very well. That entrepreneurial. No, no, I'll give you two cases. Some though you yeah. wanted no, to say I, on the I think, I mean, moonlighting. Sorry. No, no. Yeah. Mo- mo- I'll come to moonlighting in just a moment because interesting what you mentioned and what he was talking about the ten-year period and stuff, right? So fundamentally, I think when I started off with a career, right, there is a fundamental difference between having a job and building a career, <laughs> right? So. I chanced upon this career, or I wanted to be a part of this career, and therefore I am ready to go that extra mile to do my job, right? If I had been, I'm a, as I said, I'm a physics graduate followed by an MBA. If I had been in any other corporate structure, I would have just sat down and debated whether I'm working from home is comfortable for me because, as somebody said, OMR traffic and whatnot. By the way, talking of OMR, please get them to Mumbai for. Uh, Two weeks crash course or Western Express Highway, <laughs> they'll be absolutely fine with OMR. Anyway, 
No, no, we, we do have office Bank. in Mumbai. Yeah, yeah, OML is better. So, yeah. OML is better. I'll come to Bangalore. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 in that sense, so mm. is the next gen actually looking at their path ahead as mere jobs or careers? Because if it is a job, then I'm absolutely fine and therefore we have the issues of attrition rates. I'm not here to say that there is no attrition rate in media. But I'm just saying normally who get into media, at least when we all got into media, we just loved being a part of that ecosystem because we did not have formal education. So you tell me during those days, boss, I think for the first five months, you will just have to sit down and log whatever you're seeing on TV. You will do that because you, you, you somehow want to grow in that organization or in that ecosystem. As opposed to you looking at something like a job, you pay me extra 10%, I move to somebody else. And that guy tells me that, boss, you sit at home, you do whatever you want, I'm paying you extra 10%, you're a decent enough resource, I'm moving to that, right? So that's one fundamental aspect which I feel, if you ask all three, again, I go back to this example, what they would have studied and what they are doing now will be completely different, I would imagine, right? So that's one, in terms of passion for what you're doing is the fundamental point. Secondly, addressing that point of moonlighting. The media world has this clear concept of freelancing. There are very few who are associated with one organization. I mean, there are enough people associated with one organization, but there is more in the corporate side of things, a head of marketing or you know, head of sales and whatnot and stuff. But in the production side of things, there are people that move from one project to another, just like a director moves from one movie to another. So for them, I mean, you might want to, I, I can do two, two things. I can do, I can do my writing work in the morning. I can do my TV work in the evening. Look, I'm doing your job, right? At the end of the day, you are paying me, I'm doing your job. And I'm doing it to the levels that you are satisfied with. So, in, and both are my passion. So I'll anyway work, go that extra distance and work. So I would address two things from the college perspective. Are, is the next generation looking merely at jobs or are they looking at careers? I, we addressed this in the previous discussion. When I did my MBA, though I said fancy things in the interview, I know for a fact that I need to get a job first, right? So I'm saying things that I'll, I, in five years down the line, is your normal <laughs> question, right? I mean, five years <laughs> How down do you the, see yourself after five years? Well, where do you see yourself after five exactly. years? Boss, in, in five years, I don't know how many can answer that question at the age of 20. Five years back, there, there will be people who will be able to chart out a plan. At 20, I don't know how many will, but generally you say... Okay, well, at any age, it's difficult any to answer the question. Correct, correct. <laughs> I swear. Correct, that is true. So, but <laughs> we confidently said in five years, Absolutely. I want to manage a brand. That's what we wanted. <laughs> so, everybody will say that because the other guy is going to be impressed with that, right? So, technically, I mean, what... I, we all say this during interviews, true. to get a job, to get whatever it is. Once we get in, we understand whether we like something or don't like something which is what happened with somebody like me, which is what happened with a lot of us who are in the media field, because there's no formal, there wasn't anything formal then. So I think fundamentally, what is the generation looking at? Uh, I'm paying so my EMIs, my question I need a salary. So my is question that is that only then, in terms of... you're not stretching yourself at all. In terms of, you know, are actually sizable proportion of, of people... Human resource point of view, whether you want to encourage this kind of nomadism at the individual level, and from the HR point of view, you want to talk about that kind of, you know, whether you want to promote this. Yeah, so, in, in, so sorry, very quickly. Sorry, uh, yeah. Very quickly, sorry. In, say, for example, we have, in, in our field, we, we go non-stop for two and a half months. Say the IPL starts. I mean, in next week, it's starting. So, we haven't taken a break in the last uh, 20 days. And we won't be taking a break till the end of IPL. But after that, that's fine. You take a 10-day break. You tend... No, no, I, I, I was just, yeah, sorry. I mean, no, 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 uh, to answer is, after that, what I'm saying is whether, say, one is support, uh, suppose take uh, B school like that and look at companies like this, but companies want to have people like that where each one is individual, where they're looking for only jobs or should the companies offer them jobs only or career? I think I, I, I would look at it from the student's perspective. Then what, what should the companies I'm do? I'm saying, I mean, what, what, what are the I companies do? So I think fundamentally our system, till we are about 25, my, it might be a radical thought, but my belief is the system does not allow uh, us to think freely as to what we want to do. Before we are anywhere, at least in Chennai, you either are an engineer or a doctor. You just go into that. You, you are an engineer before you even realize you are an engineer, right? And before you even realize you become an MBA. 
So where is the time that is afforded to them, that I'm sure it's another discussion altogether, to actually sit back and think? And therefore, what you want to do? The creative people, they, they, they can take their time. It's not that we don't see each other face to face. We have our editorial meetings. We know, everybody knows his or her job. And then we go and do execute that job. We, we meet, we meet. It's not that we don't have a problem meeting in uh, a bar, right? We don't need to get into an office space and get and meet. I'm OK to meet you. If I want to meet you and this thing, OK, you, you find it difficult to come all the way here, we'll meet midway. Because that's the nature of our job. And we're comfortable in that ecosystem. Is what we meet. It's not that I'm saying I'm sitting at home and doing my work. No, we still meet. And me coming from a completely, probably yeah, exactly. a diametrically opposite kind yeah, yeah, of an industry, exactly. yeah. my view would be that, uh, and this is a very personal view, that especially freshers who are, who are coming out of grad schools, I would strongly advise that for the first five to 10 years, get used to working in an office space. Get a feel of what it means to work in a team. Get a, get a feel of what it means to lead a structured, structured office, you know, you know, professional life. Get into that, and probably once you reach, after, after about five to seven years, once you've gotten a feel of it, you're at a much better place to go and try out working from home. It, it just gives a structure. That's all. It's just a question of giving a discipline. That is from their point of view. I'm talking about the company's point no, of no, view. So, what should they do? So my summary is that I think the nomadism will stay, actually. That's my view. Because it will stay, actually. But I'm talking about how to tackle this from the organization. No, we have to adapt to that, actually, with the I mean, kind of digital literacy and uh, you know, uh, kind of connectivity, global connectivity, and things like that. I think it, it is important that companies have to adapt to it. Because no matter, you will find very hard to get talent in the course of time. Uh, with the kind of questions. I mean, incidentally, and the, on the contrary, TCS example you said, I was also told TCS gives uh, uh, weightage for people who are coming back yeah, yeah, to that's one plus. office. I mean, incidentally, <laughs> no, I, I was quite surprised. <laughs> Come and work in office, I <laughs> give increment. Oh, God. <laughs> no, no, see, that's, that's, that's where sir, we are into. So to answer your question, one of, see, I'm just attempting. See, so organizations to be, have to be agile enough to changing societal norms. The society, the way it's emerging, I'm saying the, you call it uh, millennial and Gen X, whatever, the Gen, the Gen Z, those born after 90s and 2000, are very I. I can see my own kid. I can relate with our own kids. I'm sure Susan, you know, all of us, they're, they're just very individualistic. Unlike yeah, we were true. very more about, you know, together, etc. because their best friend is a mobile, whatever I realized. So, Lack of a better thing, the best friend no, and the best pal. We join and then make a career, right? Yeah. We all of us join like that so, only. But companies are realizing that nomadism is the way society is changing at large. No, true. Yeah. I'm saying, should I promise a career to a guy who is joining now? Who is promising a career? I'm, I'm asking about now. TCS is he asking for a career? Any the question is that. Will, 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 you, will, you, will you promise a career? I'm saying. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely, you're right. He is not asking for a career, actually. No, okay. but you are promising a career in the you know your uh, placement uh, interviews. What is it? I didn't get you. When the companies come to the campus for their talk, CRP talks, they promise a career. No, no, I still, I, I still can provide a career. Professor, he, I think you, can, you cannot, you cannot have have promise a career in a placement <laughs> interview, and that's where I come from. Uh, I, th I think where you actually end up promising a career is when you actually when you actually tease them for those two years and prepare them for it. They come for a PPT, pre-placement talk. Pre-placement talk, but so they, they promise a career. I, I, I have a very different. The, the students don't because want a career. When you talk to a student, you giving them a ten-year or fifteen-year roadmap happens in those two years, and you prepare them for it. And I think students are fairly clear that. The students are clear. The, the, the placement I'm interview is only a job for them. No, and no. Whether, <laughs> my question is. Students are clear, but not the companies I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's saying companies still talk about, like, you know, They're still about like, career I think, only. I think, I think in the context students of this clear. room, we can be open that, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's so students the company's job to do. Students are very clear about their own thing, but companies are not still clear, I'm saying. No, no, we are telling our management right now, if you want to go fish, please put worms in the hook. <laughs> not Cadbury, which you like. <laughs> that's not point. That's how we are What they like, you put it. You put it. Only go. They will just be fish will be interested. Likewise, if you look at it, RK, I think we had a this thing. Uh, I want to extend that actually. Most of the demographic people, what they are looking for is maybe dual income, no kid, or dual income, single kid. Dinks. They Dinks. want to just sit at Dink. home. Dink. They don't have any shame or guilt. No kids. I had a problem no of EMI. No kids. They don't. Yeah. They don't mind switching careers. Yesterday, financial uh, analyst. Tomorrow, grey farmer. Day after tomorrow, he might go and to uh, some strategy consulting. They have skills and we have a war for talent. We are also at last. 
we want people to join within 15 days of offer. So in that, actually, we will have to be flexible. If Constitution of India can be amended, our work home from policy or whatever policies, every three months we will have to revisit. No, no, nomadism and career is, I, I, I'm not sure whether it is isolated actually. I mean, you can still provide a career if you are able to adapt to kind of a, you know, work from anywhere. Kind of, I mean, especially media and also. Yeah, the, so, I mean, media is obviously a very broad term. But I'm just saying in terms of just to get back to the question that you asked. So, I'm saying, you did mention uh, that the students are clear. But I don't know how much has changed. Hmm. But on day zero of the placement, I would want to go for almost everything that is in front of me. Hmm. I do not know whether I'm interested in FMCG. I do not know whether I'm going to be interested in whatever, some other field. But I try to go to get an entry into an industry or entry in. So basically, I'm hunting for a job. I'm not technically hunting a career. Though I would ideally want to hunt a career, but I'm not even taking that chance of hunting a career. Say, I got through a pharmaceutical company. Right? I mean, I was very happy that I got through a pharmaceutical company. Boss, uh, two years work or no work, I've at least got through something. That's it. Once I get in, then I'm beginning to understand whether I'm interested in that. So for me, at that stage, it is a job. At what stage does it turn into a career and therefore I look at life is the next step. That's how I look at it. Because, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, so to, to, again, to go back, I think at, at some level, I feel for the students also, because students themselves probably wouldn't know where they want to. I'm sure there are others who'd want to. There are there is a mm -hmm. percentage, but the bulk wouldn't know where they want to end up with, because I think the system doesn't okay, really say, allow say us to. They join for a job only. Correct, correct. That's what I'm saying. But companies are giving the job, thinking that they'll make a career in that. Okay, sir, I have one here. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I want okay. You don't want to lose students, a good you know, talent who they, you perceive as a good students, talent. Students, they look for a particular company and then they, 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 they join the company for a job. But they don't stay there for long. It means they're not keen about the career there. Yep. So one so year, it also boils down to year. the artificial answers that we give during the interview, right? <laughs> one year, <laughs> one year, two year. It means they're it not... Is, it is, so real. It yeah. very, no, but know, I'll so. give you, sir, one country. Career is mine. Yeah, can only yeah. I, my career is to become a CHRO, mm. say by 10 years time frame. Okay. Now I see which is the best company which takes me to that path. Okay. It's a crisscross, you know, okay. one here and then there, one here, one there. And then instead of a straight path because you'll have. So very, very, I'll answer your question. So there is a D2C company, direct to consumer, which has gone digital. It's a client of ours. So they wanted us to help with HR head, CHRO. So I gave them two candidates. One was a crisscross, three years here, three years there, three years there. Other was straight jacketed, straight jacket. one of the best FMCG companies. And they are into they are, they are beauty and care. So I saw this one with will be the straight jacketed. The other one will not have any. He chose the second one. I was shocked. I asked him, you know, the richness of experience she brings is not there with this guy. He's, he's just been in one company. He's only seen, where is he? So, and then I'm trying to answer the question. So, so I talked to other guy and said that they are looking at you. He said, yeah, I was very, very clear because the kind of experience I would, I would have never got if I had stayed. Both are FMCG start. Similar kind of FMCG, they began their careers. Similar institutes from where they have studied. No difference. One is a crisscross, three years, three years, three years. Other is six years, seven years, one, and then No, no, some of the candidates also tell me that. The kind of rich experience I have got, actually. So that's the answer they give, actually. I've lived in politically more different environments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I've I feel that uh, gender also, there is a play in that. Many, I feel men do like to crisscross, be a little bit more adventurous, start a new uh, environment, while many ladies do... My and this example is opposite. Do you feel <laughs> that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They want stability so because they are concentrating on answer. other things. One of the things which was very interestingly answered by the first break was because of maternity. Oh. I took because I couldn't manage six months. Then a company said you can work from home. Then I joined that. Money. I didn't have a problem. So she's saying more agile, more adapt more known how I've grown in an environment where I'm outside, I'm not in the office, but still I've grown. Obviously, as you rightly said, they'll market themselves and it all depends on the, the guy who's one of, I always voted for the boy, not from the point of any, gender neutral, is this guy has solid 
six years, rock solid. He's grown in this organization. He was not convinced at all. And the guy was cheaper. <laughs> because he's grown. He's, he's not, see, he would have, uh, so, so he's been there. Obviously, salary would have yeah, 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 right. been there.